Well, I'm going back to a topic we've touched on for a while. Yeah, you know, you know me. You're listening to The Human Resource. My name is Pandy Pridemore, and we are coming to you from Cincinnati, Ohio, from the ICRC TV station. This is a topic that I, or, or a conversation that I've been wanting to have with you. It's, this is a part of a training course that, that I have um, under the HR Academy. And it's, I want you to laugh a little bit with me through this show. I want you to, um, I know you're going to say, oh my gosh, where in the world did she come up with this stuff? But trust me, it, we're talking about bullying today, workplace bullying. And I don't know how I can do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a little bit of humor through this because let's be truthful. And we've talked about this. Everyone's been bullied at some point in your life. And if you don't think you have, I'm about to tell you and show you how you've been bullied. Bullying is not, unfortunately, it's something that we kind of push aside and and go into denial and we're not confronting it like we should in the workplace. We are not. If you listened to an earlier show with Scott Warwick, I mean, he flat out told you in that show how bullying and pressure and stress, what it does to our bodies and what it does to our brains. And, and none of it was good. He didn't say a single thing that I want to hear again. And yet this is going on. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you the personality types of a bully. I'm going to describe for you individual personalities that literally their actions, their their approach to their work is essentially bullying. And, And stop and think about why this should be important to you. Because again, I know you're all, not all of you are HR people, but if you're listening to this show, you have some kind of a responsibility or some kind of an interest in the workforce and in the people involved in that and in helping to maintain a safe and secure workplace where people enjoy coming to work and where people are productive and and things are positive. So... Let, let me let me give you some personalities that I want you to think about, and we'll we'll just, we'll talk about what you should do at the end with some of these individuals because I just when I first got this material in the the uh, training program I was I was astonished, but let's just start right out with the first. The first is the prankster. Now think about that. They think they're the funniest guy or girl in the room. Everyone can have a laugh when a banana shows up in the place of a handset or someone's phone, but when that same person finds that stapler stuck in jello and their desk covered with headshots of the wrong person, um, the pranksters found out that their victim was eh, not so funny. And what they're doing, they, they even they take it very personal. The prankster wants to be the center of attention. And how is that healthy? Because if they're pranking somebody, that means somebody else is on the bottom of the totem pole. Somebody else is being humiliated or somebody else is being made to look really silly. Pranksters are everywhere, but they're actually a bully. How about psychopaths? Subatores or psychopaths? Sneaky people? They're not forthright. Sometimes they're talking behind your back. They're setting situations up so that they always look good. They're not good team players unless they're in the team so that they know what's going on. They can try to control certain things. They belittle people. Do you have them in your workplace? Another one, which I think we all can identify very quickly, is the critic. This is the person that just can't find anything nice about anything that's said. They can find something wrong with 
everything. Are they giving us better ideas? Are they bringing us suggestions that we should think about versus what we just shared? No. No, because the critic the critic is so insecure that they just they just want to be miserable. And they always think that they're right and everybody else is wrong. How productive is it when you've got a critic? And think about your 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 supervisors, your team leads, your your management folks when I'm describing these people because I am going to interject here a little bit. Um, that's really, really bad. All flags should be going off. All sirens should be going off if I'm going to describe the behavior of some of your management team or your supervisors. So let's keep going. How about the clicks? You know, when we were when we were in middle school and high school, there was always the the clicks, uh, the the different either the jocks or the uh, popular girls or um, the what you know back when I was in school, you know the the nerdy kids, and you had some people like me who floated around to all the different groups, and I didn't didn't really fit in anywhere or couldn't be stereotyped. But how about your workplace? Do you have some clicks there? Sometimes they're powerful, sometimes they're not, but they're always disruptive. Be careful. This is a cute one. How about the hairy eyeballs? They're the ones always glaring at you and looking you up and down, dripping with disdain and judging you. Sometimes actions speak louder than words and just the look of this individual, it just slows everybody down. It drains you when you look at somebody and you see them. Ugh. Of course, it's different if your nine-year-old child's doing it, but when you've got an adult in the workplace, uh-uh, no, no, that's bullying. Here's the one that salespeople will absolutely be able to relate to. We've all heard the term, the gatekeeper. And if it's somebody who's just trying to block calls because they don't want lots of salespeople, that's one thing. But when you've got somebody in your office who absolutely will not allow knowledge to pass or individuals to get to solutions or resources that they need, they purposely exclude others from social events like lunches or happy, happy hours. Um, their targets never quite feel like they fit in. It, it's, it's amazing. I've been in a number of situations where employees that helped start the company start believing that the company is theirs, and therefore they, they're the keeper of the wealth, and they refuse to tell anybody what they actually do. They want to make sure that they're completely indispensable when, in fact, they're absolutely holding back progress. They're holding back the camaraderie and the collaboration that could be going on in, in the company. Gatekeepers are a little hard to deal with, but you should. And then you've got the other person who, again, I kind of described as the prankster, but then you've got the guy who isn't doing pranks but still has to be the center of attention. This personality is the person who has to up everybody up. I mean, no matter what is said, you could have climbed Kilimanjaro and this guy's going to come and tell you that he did it five times. And Or it's the woman who um, it can't let someone be complimented um, on their work because she did something like that and won awards for it. I mean, center of attention people are just so insecure that nobody wants to work with them. Everybody tries to avoid them, and yet they can't be avoided. And what does that do to your workplace? It isolates people. It, it pushes them away. They're loud. They're obnoxious. They humiliate others. Um, every idea has to be theirs. How many times do we see people who steal ideas from others? What does that do to your team? How many good ideas are you missing 
from those people who are intimidated by somebody like this. They also describe a behavior of um, bullying as a gossip. Gossips are, they can, they can go back to being kind of sneaky. Gossips are content to work behind the scenes. They will seem like your best friend, and then they'll turn around and stab somebody in the back. They'll whisper in the game room and spread rumors on coffee uh, runs. Sometimes it's personal stuff. Sometimes it's professional stuff. But gossip takes them takes employees away from what they should be talking about and what they should be spending their time on, and it draws them into drama. And where in the world, other than the theater, is drama productive in a workplace? I'm, I'm, I mean, it's a question. It's a serious question. Ask yourself, how much drama is going on in your office? And how much of that drama is being stirred up and created by a bully? How much money? I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna go further with this. How much money are you spending in just wages? Because you guys are meeting for for discussions and talks about what are we gonna do? We can't get her to stop gossiping. We can't get her to 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 stay in her seat. We can't get him to complete a project because he he's too busy out pulling jokes on everybody. We can't get him to close a deal because he's he's up and up our customers. How many times do you fight with how are we going to deal with this person when it's just so simple that they're just showing behaviors of bullying and it's something you can't avoid. You have to deal with this. The last behavior personality is the puppet master. Puppet masters take many forms and it's funny because sometimes when we want to be mentors and coaches, we want to work with individuals and we want to guide them. But this is this is the this is the boss who makes you bring him or her coffee every day. They use intimidating factors to make you feel guilty if you don't do things. They're going to say things in such a way that it's going to distract the mindset away from positive and and nurturing encouraging things that you sh- that your employees should be thinking about it's it's the person who thinks they're better and so here let me let me tell you what you should be doing let me tell you how you should do that they should never be made to feel employees should never be made to feel like they're they're doing something for the benefit of someone else if it's not in the best interest of the company or in the best interest of the team or the group. If if we if, if I go further with this, and, and again, this is kind of getting off the topic a little bit, but if I look at some of these behaviors and personalities, I can easily see where some of these people might even be taking you into other issues like discrimination, or harassment. And we all know, again, you don't have to be an HR to know that harassment is absolutely intolerable in the workplace. You can't allow things to escalate from bullying to harassment. Ten different personalities of bullying and so much damage that they can just havoc they can wreak and and, and bring to your workforce. Is this something you can ignore? Is this something that you can just stay in denial on? Look, I know these conversations are hard, but these are conversations you need to have. If you are at all in a management position and concerned about your workforce. You've been listening to The Human Resource. Let us know if we can help you. That's what we're here for.